uh, back with Jay Woods, the Freedom Capital Markets Chief Global Strategist. You know, Jay, I wanted to talk to you about other things, but the fallout for corporate America on this would, might be a net net positive development here if they focus on what they should be focusing on. But what do you think? Yeah, no, and uh, I can't wait to read uh, Charlie's book. Uh, he's written some good ones in the past. So, uh, But uh, as far as the fallout goes, this has been something that uh, ESG and ESG-friendly stocks, uh, they had their moment in the sun, and they've fallen back uh, out of favor. I don't think it is uh, one of those check marks people or investors put as one of their top five uh, reasons to invest in a company. So uh, if there's legislation that demands more from them, then, then we'll see what what happens, but I, I don't think uh, it is going to affect stock prices of these companies over the long but haul. But Charlie, there is a good point near the end there. Let's say Kamala Harris gets in. She's not going to like the direction this is going in, but the, the, it, it, you, you really can't fight the, the legal tape on this. So I'm just wondering the long-term impact on, on markets and on some of these companies that are very quickly uh, unwoking. Well, if you have an all-democratic, uh, you know, House, Senate, right, and, right. and President, then these things could pass. Uh, that's the great thing about this country. Uh, the market tends to do best when we have divided government. So if Harris were to win uh, and you have a, a Republican House and Senate, then the chances of these things passing are probably slim at best. So while it is a fear that we have, um, the pushback and the strength of the, the interest from these companies uh, on their congressmen, I, I think it would be a struggle to, to modify these plans where it's going to be detrimental to companies over the long term. You know, a, a lot of it depends on how the markets look going into an election. Uh, the markets were looking uh, pretty good. Uh, in 2000, going into that election, say very, you know, late year, mid year, when the internet was starting to feel the pinch and implode, and a lot of these technology stocks got it uh, to that. Now that could have been a preview of coming attractions for Al Gore in his race against uh, George W. Bush. But you, you, you've similarly seen it in the meltdown in 2008, and that wouldn't have helped to John McCain if he were Jesus Christ, probably. Uh, <laughs> so I wonder, given these markets and this run-up that we've experienced mm -hmm. thus far, and um, you, you're always quick to point that out, that could technically be the wind at the back of, of the Democratic ticket, couldn't it? Yeah, well, when you look at election cycles, you look at the strength uh, historically. And historically, you know, 2008 was an outlier uh, because of the financial crisis. Right, it didn't right. matter who was in, in charge then. But um, we have two cycles where uh, Donald Trump was involved. So I look at past precedent, and I look at what the market did going into 2016 into the election, looking at it 2020 going into the election. Uh, we had good years, and then we sold off and stabilized as we hit election day. Uh, 2020, a little different outlier, COVID. Uh, but we were at the near-term low in both of those elections. And then once we got certainty, both controversial elections, 2016, the Democrats didn't like the outcome. It was a surprise. 2020, uh, right. the Republicans didn't like the outcome. It was a kind of a surprise. But what happened? Okay. They were the lows of those cycle. We rallied. And the way I'm seeing the market, as much as the presidential politics will come into play and will make great headlines, uh, the market really won't care at the end of the day. Okay. Who's in power will have stability, and we should rally. Uh, I like the rally at the end. We'll see how it goes. Jay Woods, thank you very much.